Hi, welcome to Moina Bass Fishes. I'm Jim Moina, and we are talking about in this video, we're talking about the 2023 Tackle Warehouse Invitational Tournament on Lake Eufaula in Oklahoma. Uh, today was the second day of competition. It's a three-day tournament, top 50 fish on the third day. After day one, I had 11 pounds, four ounces, and it was a 90th place. So I had, a, <clears throat> had, to, had to do much better today if I wanted to make the cut. And as it turns out, I tied for 50th place. And they, and they only take 50. If there's a tie for 50th, one person is left on shore the next day. And the way they decide that is whoever has the biggest one-day bag, five fish limit, is the, that's the tiebreaker. So that person who has the, the biggest one-day limit, they move on. And as it happens to be, I was that person to move on. So, sorry. <laughs> I feel... I, I generally feel feel for uh, the guy I tied with. His name's Chad Allison. I don't, I don't know him, but um, I'm sure he's feeling really shitty right now or at least I when I have a tie like that and I'm on the bad side of the tie I mean I, I <laughs> it's not a good evening for me when I'm on the wrong side of that um but so Chad hope uh hope you shake that off and and their tiebreaker really is I don't like that tiebreaker it's you know if you tie for a cut position just take the extra man and include them into the uh, into the action for the next day. I mean, it's really not that hard. Um, what's one extra guy? You know, if you got fifty, what's one extra one? What's one extra guy? Fifty-one. You know, the guy tied. And and the tiebreaker they use is it really even meaningful? Is it substantial? Does does that mean I'm a I was a better fisherman this tournament because I had the bigger one-day bag. I mean, on, the, on his side of the coin, well, he was more consistent for the two days. So a lot of people say consistency is the better measure of a, of, of a good angler. So it's really kind of a meaning, meaningless, groundless, meritless uh, tiebreaker uh, criteria, if you ask me. Um, I'm... Fortunately, I'm the benefactor of it this time. I'm sure I'll be on the other side of it uh, in the future as I have been before. So, anyhow, uh, so tomorrow's the top 50. Uh, what did I have for a catch today? Yeah, it was 15 pounds, 14 ounces. I had three really nice ones and then just two, like two pounders. I only caught six keepers. Lost, uh, lost one keeper. He jumped in through the bait. Um, so I went six for seven on landing fish, which was much better than yesterday, which was probably about 50%. Because literally I, I had like 10 keeper bites at least. There, I may even had more because I didn't see those fish. But I jumped three of them off yesterday, including a three and a half and a four pounder, 15 feet from the boat. So I, that was just an awful day yesterday, frustrating. <laughs> so six for seven today, uh, that's okay, I guess. Um, you always like to do better than that. Nine for 10 is what I like, 90% is what I like to strive for. That's a good number. If you can get, if you can land nine out of 10 fish that you hook, um, that that's... That's where I, I want to be, minimum. So anyways, yeah, so I had, my biggest one was like a five pounder. That was a beauty. And the whole time, you know, once once I got to my 15 pounds, 14 ounces, I probably still had another hour, hour and a half to fish. And I kept telling, you know, and the, running through my mind was, Jim, one more quality fish and you will be fishing tomorrow. You need that one more. You need that one more. And well, that one more never came. And luckily, uh, you know, luckily I got in there anyways. So, uh, and, and this, and, and it's huge because 
Um, it, it's very important that I make this top 50 cut. Well, for one, you get $8,000. 51st place gets that many dollars. So that's a, that's a sad and harsh reality of losing out on the tiebreakers, that as well. So, uh, so tomorrow, um, I think the next pay grade upward is at 30th place or better. So obviously we're going to try to catch our biggest, you know, try to catch our biggest bag yet of the tournament. And if I do that, that will, because I'm only like two pounds out of 30th. So if I can bring in like 16 and a half, 17, um, that might just get me there. But that's a tall, tall order for sure. I, I'm not catching enough fish to really... Uh, yeah, I had one. I had one day in practice where I ran into several quality fish, and I need that to happen again tomorrow. So we'll see. Uh, but the points, and, and I'm fishing for points tomorrow because, as I've mentioned in other videos, my goal is to be in the top eight in the angler of the year points after these six tournaments in this uh tackle warehouse invitational trail by being in the top eight in the angler of the year points that means i excuse me qualify for the bass pro tour which is where i want to be which is the top it's that's the top of this league the top of the mlf business is the fish the bass pro tour they got a lot of cool stuff going on for those guys team competitions uh st things that i want to be part of you know it the, the competition is it's the best comp to me it's the best competition it's the most competitive field of fishermen there is top to bottom now, obviously the Bassmaster elite's got some outstanding anglers too but if you measure top to bottom of both leagues i wouldn't give the nod to the uh, Bass Pro Tour uh, anglers. So that, so qualifying would be, I mean, that's one thing. And then to actually be competitive at that level, uh, it can be done. It can be done. I've fished against all those guys in the Bass Pro Tour in the past. Um, you know, there's some stiff resumes in that group, that's for sure. And, uh, but my, you know, I've been around this game. I, I got a knack of uh, just hanging around and and just making something, making the most of what I can do. Anyways, uh, I would have to say, well, what about tomorrow? Oh, well, let's talk a little bit more about today because there's stories to be told. <laughs> it was so wickedly windy today. It started, it started out windy, and we kind of had like a south wind. I'm staying across the lake at this campground, across the lake from the takeoff, and this is a big basin where this, and there's several basins in this lake, and this is one really big basin. So I'm contemplating, do I drive around and launch, you know, and launch where everybody else is launching and, and have to deal with all the, the whole morning launch line and just the uh, rigmarole of that. Or do I launch here where I, it's just a couple guys and it's just, you know, no, no stress. You just launch and go. So, I, so which is what I did day one. So that's what I did day two today. I mean, it, and I was driving across the lake kind of mostly, it was mostly dark still. A little bit of light in the horizon of the um, ensuing sunrise. But I was I was doing just fine. Uh, it was it was windy, but I was fine. But my God, the wind came up so bad during the day, and it switched directions. <laughs> it was now coming out of the north, which was like a major part of the basin. I mean, where we take out, it was like in the southern part of this basin, and the wind was coming out of the north, so it was hammering, getting back to the way in. <laughs> And I fished, knowing that I had one more quality, one more good quality bite. I felt like I needed. I fished. Uh, I mean, I didn't give myself enough time for an easy run back in those waves. 
I came back running harder than I like to and uh, made it back with two minutes, but it was uh, it was a spine a spine breaker, that's for sure. <laughs> for right. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, well then here's then to, to, moreover on this point. So yeah, I weigh my fish. Well now. Now I'm th I'm thinking I'm like man I got to drive all the way back through all that crap to to uh, my campground across the lake, so I start thinking about it. I'm like hey you know what maybe I can get a ride from somebody that's staying over there, and uh, it, you know he could give me a <clears throat> I don't know where he lost. so the person I was thinking about was Ky uh, Kyle Weisenberger don't really know him. Uh, said hi to him a few times i know he was camping over here so i thought you know maybe uh you know maybe, maybe he'll give me a, you know maybe he launched maybe he drove around and launched because i know day one he launched at the campground but maybe he drove around so fortunately he was uh um one f flight behind me and in the, and at the weigh tanks at the station at the uh, holding area before you bring your fish up the scales he was only about five guys behind me so, um, so I asked him, if, yeah, can I hitch a ride? And man, no problem. So nice guy, nice gentleman. Uh, appreciate that, Kyle. Cause then he gave me the ride around in his truck. Cause he did launch over there at the other side of the lake where the weigh-in was. So he was able to drive me around to, to my truck at the campground. And then I took my truck and drove it back. I left my boat sitting there unattended and then I drove back because uh, there was a launch right there at the WAN. So I drove back to that launch and loaded up there and drove it all back around. It was super windy. So tomorrow, um, it's not going to be as windy. And, and we had this big front come through. So the, I think the fish were biting. It was really windy, but it made, which made things difficult. And it was the second day of pounding these fish. So even though I think some of the fish might have been active, just uh, guys weren't, it just was hard to fish in these conditions. So the, so the weights were down a little bit today compared to uh, day one. But I, I, I think if you got around them, they bit today. So tomorrow, I think they'll be, I think it'll be even a tougher bite tomorrow because uh, we'll have, this front will be, have moved through. And I think the fish will just, be just kind of in a mode where they're going to be on a sh they're just going to shut down tomorrow for the most part so i think you'll see down weights and i'm going to do whatever i can to catch my limit of fish um it's which hasn't been easy i only wait i only caught five keepers probably lost like six or seven the first day and then today uh only caught six keepers hooked up seven times so I'm not like generating a lot of bites, which is kind of discouraging in a way, but that's what it is. So maybe I change up my patterns tomorrow. How do I adjust? Well, I think when you get a front that comes through and, and the water temperature cools down, and if we get the bright sunshine tomorrow, you could see these fish utilizing these docks a little more than what they have been, or at least more than what I've experienced. I've been catching small fish off of docks, not any keepers really. So that's, I, li I like docks after the front's passed and it's sunny again and calm. No, the wind isn't supposed to be as bad. So I don't know, that might be something I might want to try it tomorrow but man anyhow that's enough of this video i will uh report uh, a full tournament report either tomorrow or in the next few days it just depends on um whether or not i i may want to just load up and just crank you know just get on the road and uh anyways that's not nothing you guys need to worry about. That's me. <laughs> yeah, there, there's my two-day total, by the way. 27-2, good for a tie for 50th. 
Hopefully we can add, hopefully I can double that tomorrow. Wouldn't that be sweet? All right, that's about all I gotta say. Thanks for watching, over.